Hey everybody, I'm Briscoe Diggs and welcome to Real Talk. Today we have with us a triple threat performer. He's an actor, a singer, a dancer, an all around good guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Love. Thank you. What's for up being- everyone? Yeah, Robert, thank you so much for, for, for doing this. I appreciate it. This no is- worries. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, my artist spotlight. So you are only the third person in the artist spotlight and I saved those three um, spots and it was one was yours. So <laughs> I'm awesome. so glad that we're doing this. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> I'm honored. Yo, I love your hat too. I had on my Harlem hat earlier. Thank you. Know, you. Going, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Cool, cool. Thank you. Let me ask, because this is what I started with everyone. How are you doing through with all this pandemic and the and the protests and, and everything else that's going on in the world? How are you holding up? Um, luckily, I've actually I've been holding up really well. Uh, I didn't get laid off from my job, so I've actually been working. Um, so my nine to five, uh, I've actually kept, there was no, there's been no fluctuation in, um, hours or money or anything like that. It's been, uh, I've been, it's been consistent at work. Um, it's crazy because, um, all the, the protesting and the riots and all that, um, happened when, uh, I was actually moving into a new my new apartment, so oh. <laughs> it was it was crazy with the with with everything that was going on and um, the curfews and right. and all that. But um, I've been holding up pretty well. Uh, I've been yeah. just working and uh, on the weekends, you know, working on music and mm-hmm. and trying to focus on uh, creating more content with you know with the with the ep hopefully right yeah. in the future that's exciting so uh i know that you're from minneapolis and i know that there was a you know uh minneapolis went through a lot doing this yes um, how did you feel being here and watching your your hometown going through this this you know it was the catalyst for, for all this that's happening right now so how yeah do you feel about that i know it was probably kind of so to even touch further to even mm-hmm. Uh, to even give you some more in depth. Uh, so my uncle uh, is Chief Madera Arredondo, the oh. chief of police. That's mm-hmm. actually that's actually my uncle. <laughs> Our, yeah, so it's, he's, it's crazy how like um, seeing him in the news and seeing him uh, spotlight and just like, um, it's crazy. Yeah. To, to and for everyone, um, for everyone that was dealing with it, um, you know, it, it was a trip. You know, everyone talking about him here in LA, um, <laughs> and the situation and all that, and knowing that that's my family, it was right. It was kind of it was it was kind of cool. Yeah. But um, yeah, Minneapolis is a great state, uh, but. You know they do have a lot of flawed um, system practices uh, with the police, so this definitely uh, hopefully uh, urged change in in the in the um, in the police force, just because uh, it was a common thing and it's been happening for decades. It's right. just we're now recording it. And so with us recording it now, it's it's being brought up and, it, you know, it's allowing because you can't really you can't really tell somebody what what they're doing. You have to show them. And so, you know, for years and years and years, you know, Minneapolis, they've been trying to get, you know, the police to be more um, to to go by the steps that they were that they were taught instead right, of, right. you know, just mm. getting trigger happy and just mm-hmm. uh, using ex- excessive force without leading up to that, without taking the steps to lead up to that. They right. just go straight to, mm-hmm. um, but um, Michael, he's, he's actually doing, I think he's doing a great job. I think he's doing the best with what he's, you know, what he's been given and, He's just trying 
to do the best that he can. Mm -hmm. um, and there are good policemen out there. There are good, good, good people in the police force. Um, and it wasn't taken away from them mm -hmm. by everyone uh, shining a light on the bad ones. It just right. was shining a light, a light on the bad ones. Like we know there are good cops, but right. also are bad mm -hmm. cops. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the, the main focus was, was trying right. to um, get them out and, mm -hmm. and, you know, get them reprimanded. Um, right. But yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Hopefully I, there's a new day coming. Yeah, it's yeah, coming. It's coming. Yeah. We yeah, my mom was actually, my mom was actually, she lived really, really close to uh, where they started burning down the building. So oh, it, was, wow. it was super, super scary for her. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and all the looting. Uh, mm -hmm. It's crazy because my sisters and my family, and they all tell me like, when I go back, I'm not going to recognize anything because everything is like right. burnt down to the ground. Wow. That's, that's. That's deep, yeah. Because I remember back in the seventies, <laughs> aging myself. <laughs> there was a black, <laughs> there was a blackout in New York. I was really young. I was really young then. And uh, the next morning, it was just, what the heck? It, mm -hmm. it did not look the same place. And I was, you know, living in the hood at the time. But you know, it was like just, but it was pristine in a certain way. And then eventually, mm -hmm. just like they tore it up. And then the seventies became a mess in New York City. But yeah, I totally understand see, seeing your home. You know, knowing that your home is altered, you know, we yeah. up and everything. So yeah. um, now, of course, people are going to say, you know, what was it like growing up in Minnesota, uh, Min uh, Minneapolis, um, having the influence of Prince around y'all? Yeah. <laughs> you know, was it was it was it like everybody's thinking like you know it was like he was Prince's town and and uh, you know how was that? Uh, growing up, um, everyone loved Prince. We all loved Prince, um, and he he had a estate as everyone knows, he has a state there. Um, and he influenced a lot of artists, a lot of um, just people, everyday day people. My mom loved him. <laughs> My mom was in love with him. Um, and yeah, he, he, he still has so much influence on um, just everyone not only from Minnesota, but just, mm -hmm. you oh. know, I, now that I'm older and now that I, I am an artist myself and that, you know, I write my own music and I do all this stuff. I've researched the history of who he is and how his creations, you know, came to life. And it's so crazy how he did everything. He did all his arrangements. He did all his, you know, he played a lot of instruments. Like it's just, it's, yeah. he was so multi-talented. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it, and I've definitely grown to be more appreciative of uh, his artistry and who he was mm -hmm. as a, as a person. Right. He was a great man. I must tell you, my sister, she's a psychiatrist and she travels around a lot and does speeches and she has, she went to uh, Minneapolis, Minneapolis and mm -hmm. she fell in love <laughs> <laughs> with the city she said it's, it's a fantastic this is way before covid it's a fantastic yeah. place she said if it wasn't for for the cold because we're new yorkers she doesn't mm. matter so i don't understand what's the difference she would move there and i think that she just she's she you know maybe one day she might she said it's a it's a fantastic place i'm like okay I can yeah <laughs> i love minneapolis and many I, I just love minnesota minnesota yeah. is such a nice place i always uh i always tell everyone Minnesotans are so nice. Um, even the thugs and people that are gonna rob you, they're gonna say please and thank you thank before you. <laughs> before they steal your wallet or before they rob That's you. That's so funny. <laughs> Cause I, back in the day, I got I've been mugged a few times, but in New York, one day I was going to my aunt's house and I was walking through the park. I had no money on me. I was just going from my, my house to my aunt's. Didn't even I had my lighter? I used to smoke cigarettes. I had my lighter and cigarettes, and the dude was, had put a gun to my face and was like, "May I have your money, please?" <laughs> And I almost started laughing. Uh, <laughs> really, dude? You that's can't funny. Go. First of all, I had the money. So he took my lighter and my cigarettes. <laughs> you tacky. Oh, New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they say, they say that if you, because I lived in New York um, prior to moving, right, prior right, to yeah. living in LA. Mm -hmm. And they said if you, if you hadn't been mugged, you're not you're not a true New Yorker. Almost oh, ran over by a a, a taxi. <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. I've, I've definitely had both. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely gotten splashed with a nice, a nice outfit on. Yeah. Splash the hell out of my clothes. You can't yeah. like run home and change. <laughs> right. Because then you got to get on like five trains. For real. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about your family just a little bit. Okay. You have a unique uh, situation. You have a twin brother and you also have two sisters that are twins. So two sets yes. of twins on, in your family. What was yes. that like? Uh, who were the oldest and what was that like growing up? I'm sure y'all are real so, cute too. Y'all are like the male and female versions of each other. It's like y'all is so so adorable. I just love it. So anyway, what you say? <laughs> so um, the oldest is Jose. That's okay. my brother. So your my twin brother. Okay. Yeah. By a minute, my mom by had minute, a, a <laughs> cesarean. She had a C-section. Uh, so he's the oldest, um, and then it's me, and then Aquila is the oldest of the girls, and then Mariah is the youngest of the wow. twin girls nice, nice but yeah growing up it it was definitely <laughs> it was definitely it, it was it was a fun experience we always we had each other to play with um right. and so there was never a dull moment in the house when like my mom would go off to work or be out for a little bit we just you know we had each other to keep our keep keep occupied so it was definitely a fun a fun experience growing up, but I definitely, since I am, you know, I have a lot of sisters and brothers because I do have on my dad, on my dad's side, we have um, five other sisters okay. and then my mom has one of the boy. Okay. Uh, so it definitely, I want one kid. <laughs> yeah, leave. <laughs> I just want one child right, to bring right. into this world. And <laughs> That's all, and just spoil yeah. him rotten and right yeah, or her. Right, right. Um, but yeah, it was it was that's, definitely that's a fun cool. fun growing up. That's cool. Yeah, I have two sisters I was raised with, and I have another bunch of siblings on my father's side. And mm -hmm. um, it's so weird when I moved to LA, I found mm -hmm. my brother. And oh, that's we were born. We're not actually twins, but we were born on the same day, five years apart. <laughs> and I, but that's yeah, it's crazy. And That's I actually remarkable. worked with my sister doing background and had no idea that she was my sister until that weekend. My brothers, um, they had a little falling out, so they weren't really talking, but he set up a meeting with me to meet her at a restaurant. And I mm -hmm. walked in and I'm like, oh, what the hell? We had just worked together. Right. That's and, so crazy. Uh, uh, we, we don't talk now, so <laughs> you can see oh. how that went. Not on my part. I reached out a lot, and I'm not going to call her out. I'm not even going to say her name, but she's just not ready to to be my sister. Whatever, I you mm -hmm. know, I, I, it's fine. She can have her own journey as long as I found my family and my. Because I was, you know, my mother and my father didn't make, you know, didn't work out. So she married met my my dad Al, and he adopted me when I was a year old. So mm -hmm. he raised me, you know, and uh. I had the best upbringing, you know, I have, I have yeah. my father's DNA, which is cool. You know, I like, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm black, you know, you know, half Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. half black, you know, that's cool. But, uh, but I have my other, my, my dad's nurturing. So it, it kind of worked mm -hmm. out. Um, yeah. I don't know what I'm getting to. I'm telling my whole life story. <laughs> it's supposed to be about Robert. No, not about, no yeah, it's actually, it's, it was it's just interesting uh, though. It's really hard to, sometimes I, I would think back and say, you know, I guess my father, he didn't want me, but he died when he was 30 something. He was very young and I really mm -hmm. can't judge him because I, I didn't meet him so i'm gonna i let that all go all that hatred and all that mm -hmm. that mess because i wouldn't be here like i said you know without him and my mom doesn't say anything really bad about him you know they shouldn't really talk mm -hmm. about him a lot but there's nothing really the only bad part about him is that he was a habitual uh he was a womanizer basically yeah and, you know he was in he was in rock and roll he was you know famous as a teenager so he had kids over here and over there and over here. So every time when I was younger <laughs> and there was a guy around my age, I'm like, who's your father? Where? Right. <laughs> if you have Puerto Rican, I gotta know you. I'm not sleeping with my brother. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was, my head would explode. <laughs> right. <laughs> or your brother would train. <laughs> and it was so crazy, you know, um, my brother's straight, but we used to hang out in the same clubs and didn't even know that we were in the same places together. Mm -hmm. That's you know, crazy. Say to me, yo, this is guy. He just he just reminds me of you so much, and it was my brother all this time, and so yeah, it's crazy. So we met as old men, and we get along so well. We just like we're we're. He's like one of my best friends, and I think that's really cool. I know one of my aunts, and 
she's you know she's lesbian so it's just like oh i see where it came from <laughs> 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 let me ask you something um i'm not gonna get mm -hmm. too much in your personal life but um your brother and you are both decided to um, get into show business you both went into that that area was that how did that work how did how was that was this something that just naturally happened or did it just um so um we actually grew up dancing competition dancing in minneapolis minnesota uh well not necessarily in minneapolis but, but in minnesota right um we went to a very pristine uh competition studio um larkin dance studio we also mm -hmm. went to uh we grew up doing um tap jazz ballet right. musical theater um anything so we always have been we've always loved the arts we love dancing um we used to literally <laughs> we used to sing we we lived in a duplex so we used to sing all the time in our bathroom um and try to out one each other with runs and 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 riffs and um my aunt who lived upstairs we lived in the bottom duplex my aunt lived upstairs she used to be she was annoyed with us all the time because we literally we didn't care <laughs> we didn't care what time it was if one of us started singing then we both started singing <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy that's so cool that's so cool you know um i noticed that you you did a lot you traveled a lot uh for your w w during your career i i when i met mm -hmm. you i think you had just come off uh was it sesame street tour or yes sir yeah, i was yeah yeah so tell it was me about, uh, about that. Yeah, it was um, Sesame Street uh, USO, the USO uh, meet oh. Sesame Street tour. Um, so I did Sesame Street live for oof, seven years of my life. Wow. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Wow. On and off. So uh -huh. um, it's definitely it was definitely one of the greatest experiences. I met so many talented and very just warm hearted people that, you know, that I'm very appreciative of. I met a lot of friends and have a lot of friendships um, through, you know, through touring. Right. Um, but when I met you, I just had got off of the the USO tour. Okay. Um, USO Sesame Street tour, and um, I we did the states for about nine months. Um, we toured the states, all the military bases, and then um, we went overseas for another nine months and we toured a lot of countries and and we did a lot of uh we did all the merits military bases you know the, the u.s military bases over over in seas over in europe and asia and then we ended um in guam and then hawaii and then i came back came back home to la right so, yeah <laughs> Right, yeah, we have a really good friend in, in common. Your best friend is one of my dearest friends, and I love her so much, Chelsea Rose. I just want to hug her yes. all the time. <laughs> and she's just amazing. And I met Chelsea uh, through uh, a friend of mine, Aurora. We were taking class together. Mm -hmm. And we have also her cousin, uh, Deanna Nicole Baxter, is, is one of my yum yum friends too. I love her. She put me in one of her movies, which is really nice. Uh, oh. yeah, I, played, I played, she played Billie Holiday, and I played. <laughs> uh, uh, Louis McKay, her, Louis McKay, her her Billy D. Williams part basically. <laughs> it was messed up though. I I I had to beat her up in this scene. And I, I'm not violent unless I really have mm, to. And I, right. I was kicking her butt. And I'm like crying inside, trying to be yo, where my money at? And all this stuff. As soon as it was done, I was like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, it's just, it, but it took a lot to get to that point of you know, yeah. somebody. But yeah, Chelsea is is one of the the sweetest, the nicest, just. You know, she's your best friend. You yeah, know, she she's, just loves. Chelsea's amazing. And really, and you know, me and her toured for a little bit too, as well. Y'all look alike too. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> yeah, everyone that, um, everyone, uh, thought that we were, we're, we're sister, our sister, sister and brother every time yeah, they see us together. Yeah. But we actually, me and her, me and her and my brother met, um, doing competition dancing. We all went to the same studio That's and awesome. she was like, she was the new, she was the new kid. Um, <laughs> and we all got on the same uh, competition line and we fell in love with her. Yeah. <laughs> and we were inseparable ever since. 
That's awesome. Let's talk about Jose for a second. I know okay. that he he was on uh, he was in Hamilton for a while, right? Yes, yeah, he was. Amazing. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's just like six degrees from Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he was he played Samuel Seabury uh, in the in the, uh, the Chicago uh, production. Right. Um, and he was there for about a year. Um, mm-hmm. And I saw I got to see I went and visited him and I got to see the opening or I got oh. to see them open the soft open nice and so it was it was really cool i'm not really a musical theater guy okay um because i moved out to new york to do musical theater and then mm-hmm. i fell in love with just music um right. and television because i love mm-hmm. i love television i love getting in a scene or in a character and then not having to re reread or re-say the lines that i've already said and i think <laughs> I think I just I'm not really into not saying I would never do a play ever yeah. again because I've done um oh yeah a couple of shows out here. Oh yeah, um, I was gonna mention it later, but yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just I love I love the diving into a character and actually just leaving them or leaving that okay. situation or 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 the scene and then moving on to you know something new, right. something different. Well, speaking of musical theater, I know that you did into the heights. Uh, I did. Yes, and I, I didn't I didn't see you, but the clips that I saw, you were really good, Robert. <laughs> Thank Go ahead, you. you can sing, you can dance. It's like, and that's like a lot of to, to be doing at the same time. And um, I lived in Washington Heights for a while, so I know that mm-hmm. area really, really well. Me and my first yeah. wife, we had an apartment up there. So, how was that experience being? You know, because it looked great. Uh Lynn Manuel. Manuel. Miranda, Miranda. I he's name. actually, <laughs> I had to think about it. I, know. No, I had it's to think okay. about pronouncing it correctly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he is such a very talented guy. Um, mm-hmm. A friend of mine was actually in the first national tour of uh, In the Heights um, and he played Sonny. Into the Heights, I said Into the Heights, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. I, know, I was thinking we of Into the Woods, he... Into the Heights, Sorry. <laughs> I know it, but In the Heights. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. In the Heights. <laughs> um, and my friend did, uh, he did the first national tour and he played um, Sonny. And okay. so uh, I fell in love with the character. Yeah. Um, I felt as though, I felt as though he had a lot of, of course he had a lot of development throughout the show just because mm-hmm. he's, he's a child. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was presented with uh, playing him um, in the Simi Valley production uh, over in Simi Valley, California, or Sim, yeah, Simi Valley. Yeah. Uh, and I couldn't miss, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. So I ran with it. I loved, you know, playing him for the three weeks that, you know, we, we were, we were for three weeks that the show was running. Mm-hmm. And it was just, it was amazing because. I went from just being a dancer to um, pushing myself to act and, Mm -hmm. you know, really take it to the next. Cause I've taken acting classes and I've gone over scripts. I've had auditions, but I really wanted to uh, get my feet wet with like acting and, and really focusing on that. Prior to that, I did, um, yeah. I did another another musical, but I I only danced in it. Memphis, oh, okay. I did Memphis, I did Memphis, and Ooh, wow, I was okay. the dance I was the dance captain for that. Um, oh, okay, cool. Uh, but I really wanted to, because I've always wanted to act. I've always mm-hmm. wanted to sing. So I told myself I need to start focusing on that here and really taking the the roles and the opportunities that help me um, really nurture those those talents 100 percent. yeah now speaking of acting mm-hmm. you are are known as chase on conframa which is on amazon prime y'all y'all need to see this okay people of color men of color i don't want to give anything away but yes robert 
<laughs> Wonderful. It's like, shoot, I'm, I'm loving the fact when my friends, when people I know get success, it just, it just mm-hmm. it fills my heart because at, le- at least I know I'm surrounding myself with the right people. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm saying it's like, it, 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 it's like a kindred spirit kind of thing. It, it, mm-hmm. your, your success is my success, especially being a person of color and being, I love being it. Uh, you know, who we are, you know? Right. And I, <laughs> and, and I, mm-hmm. I definitely, I love surrounding around. What was that like playing that role? Cause you know, you were, you were, that was good. You were doing some, some stuff in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you. It was, it was, it was one of the most challenging roles that I've taken mm-hmm. so far. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved Chase and um, the developing his character um, because, you know, I had to play a very like timid, a very like, um, <laughs> I'm 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 a very like stern or not stern, but I'm a very like straight to the point guy. <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not like I don't beat around bushes. I'm I'm that. not like I'm very my mom and and my dad both taught me and my my sisters and my brother to be very strong and to not take anybody's mess. Um, mm-hmm. But Chase is not like that. Chase, <laughs> um, the character I played definitely took a lot out of me because mm-hmm. he did get beat in the series and I didn't know you know because me I do like to I like to dab a little bit in um in different ways of acting mm-hmm. um but my and, and one of my things is I want to feel um I want to take myself internally to the place right. um and with that being said, it show I believe it shows better externally what? when you really take yourself. Um, and it was, <laughs> I love shooting the series, but the days that I would get beat, I would literally, I would go home and my whole body was would ache as if I was really getting beat. And it was crazy because my scene partner um, who played my, um, my boyfriend who would beat on me, he, um, he was such a great, he was a great scene partner. Like he was so nurturing. He, he wanted to make sure that, you know, I was okay and that he right. didn't hurt me. And so it was really, really cool. The cast was wonderful. Um, the staff was wonderful. The director, um, the makeup artists, they were all super, super nice, super, super right. wonderful people. And yeah, I loved, I loved working on the series. I loved my co-stars <laughs> and it was, it was an amazing opportunity. Yeah. I like the fact that it's this, this men of color uh, in the show and uh, it's, we need to see more of that. You know, I know that mm-hmm. the storyline you know, goes here, you know, I don't want to give anything away for people that haven't seen it yet, but it's just the fact that we have these actors on here doing their thing. And, you know, it's like, it's, a, it's used to be sporadic and now it's we're getting this right. more and more. So mm-hmm. you're, you're on the right path. And I think that's great. You know, we need Thank that. You. You know, definitely we need that. Um, now let's, let's segue to your music because uh, you have a single out. Yes. And the video, you have a video out, which is great. I love the car. I love the dancing. Thank you. did your thing on that. So uh, tell me how that came about and where people can find that and see it and all that stuff. <laughs> so, uh, I will actually give you the whole entire scoop of (laughs) of what it took to get that song out and what it took, what it took me as a person with the journey. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was actually the second song. Um, The first song um, I never released. Um, The song was, the song was also called Cruising. Um, I paid a producer a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And the contract was very shady. Mm. Um, my thing is, is I helped write half of the song. He was not giving me any credits. Okay. He was going to be the sole owner of the song. Mm. Um, and so last minute, I pulled out. I didn't sign the contract. Mm-hmm. Um, That's good. And just started, I told myself to just re 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 sorry, rewrite a new song. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so I literally, that weekend, after crying my eyeballs out because I felt like I I lost a child or somebody in my family, um, (laughs) I I took it upon myself to rewrite 
the the song that you that you you know the song that's out that's out now right uh-huh. um um it just was getting with the right person i've known trent park for a while uh-huh. long long time i just didn't think i was ready uh to work with him just because i'm not as experienced as yeah. he is because he's that. he's done a lot of work he's right. he's he's very established so mm-hmm. i thought i wasn't worthy yet right. um <laughs> but i reached out to him and he is literally my saving grace because you know he i sent him the melody he fixed the song to my voice to the arrangement that i mm-hmm. that i envisioned in my head and we literally went in and got the track done within like a couple of hours That's and we so got funny. all the vocal arrangements all the melodies all the harmonies and and the, yeah and then we were it was done like two weeks later he's just so professional and <laughs> and and he was definitely my saving grace in that in that moment that is so cool i am so proud of you because the video looks great the song is great and uh, Thank you. you know, it's, it, it doesn't, it, it's so professional. It's so, you know, it's great. I'm like, I keep talking about like, <laughs> people think I'm crazy. I bring my friends on to talk about this stuff and I'm a fan of my friends. You know, obviously I <laughs> bring somebody on here. I'm like, you know, I don't really like his work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad, I'm glad you like, no, yeah. you like my- So proud of you, you know, you came out here and you know, everybody has the dream, but you gotta just, you gotta keep working on that dream. You just can't just, have it just let it sit there you know so yeah and and that's one thing that you know if if there's anybody that's listening uh to this podcast and need words of encouragement success you know i i don't consider myself super successful um but i believe success is how you feel at the end of the day for the work that you've done and so there you go i'm very i'm very happy with my journey i'm very happy with the opportunities that you know i've been given um like i said i've been twirling around my house when i was a child (laughs) singing and dancing and i envisioned (laughs) i envisioned myself you know being an artist and singing and having music and you know it definitely i've been out in la for nine years right (laughs) and it's definitely it's it's definitely um you you have to you have to keep fighting for what you love mm-hmm. even if you don't even if you're not making millions of dollars right um because you know then doing what you love does not require millions of dollars it just requires the um the passion and the drive uh like i said just mm-hmm. bo- great bodies of work is is what makes me you know feel right successful and yeah. so Thank and you. a yeah, friend of mine no a friend of mine actually just told me to um release a music video with the song just because you know i i'm a nobody and they you know it's 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 nice for people because everyone wants to be visually stimulated mm-hmm. nowadays so that's mm-hmm. why i decided <laughs> to do do a video with the single at the same time. That's perfect. Yeah, because people are like, "Who is this person? I want to see what we look like." And then it's, <laughs> that's yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's, it it helps with the song too. It just puts it all in, you know, that, into perspective. Yeah. yeah, so cool, so cool. I know you have something else coming up. Uh, uh, another. It's in post production. I forgot what it's called. Let me see. Let me look at my notes. <laughs> um, death, death, something. What is it? Yeah. Um, Go ahead. What? I so where it's it literally is at like a standstill right now. Oh um, yeah, because of COVID and everything. Yeah, so we're not we're not sure. Yeah, Death what, Boy. Yeah, what, yeah, 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 Death sorry. Boy, mm-hmm. and we're not we're not sure of, of what's Gonna what's happen. going on. Right. Yeah, so mm-hmm. so the yeah. effects of COVID it really has an impact on everything that we're doing in, in show business. You know, out yeah. right now, like I have an audition for this. I had to do it over tape, obviously. And then mm-hmm. to, there's a whole list of stuff that I need to do for the COVID tests and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wow, they're serious yeah. about this. Uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I was working on as well, one of my 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 regular shows was canceled and I had it done a fitting for the entire season for the show Glow on Netflix and they just canceled it. They're not even gonna, they're not even gonna finish the last season. So wow. you know, that affected that. And 
Um, I'm supposed to be on Grey's Anatomy, but now they're not really using background anymore. They're just, <laughs> I don't really know how they're doing it right now. They just we really started, but so my two, those two, my main, um, you know, gigs are mm-hmm. going on. So I decided, you know what? Let me get back to my show because I, you know, I did yeah. this five years ago and put it put it aside for a little bit. And I mm-hmm. said, well, I'm, I'm going to bring it back with a different light this time, and I'm going to start showcasing people of color and artists and people that I know because Amazing. of what's going on. And it's the first time. I did an interview, two interviews today. The first time I didn't wear my Black Lives Matter shirt, I figured, because I, I had to wear this for an audition. So I figured, yeah. Yeah, I, I wore it enough through the entire season I, and I'll retire that for now. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, we got to let people know. Um, yes, so, most definitely. Uh, I'm going to have a link for everything, you know, your, your, your song and Conframa on Amazon Prime, y'all. You got to do it <laughs> watch and i'll let everybody know about you know what's going on uh we'll keep everybody you know up to date if there's anything new that comes along we'll put that link up there on our uh, on my youtube channel and uh well robert thank you so much this has been nice thank you, you. yeah thank you I so wanna, much for you're welcome. Me. no problem and i want to let the audience know that if you have a dream in your heart and a plan it's never too late all right so remember that and don't give up because people will get on your nerves and they're going to try to make you give up so they can take your spot. <laughs> right. Amen. Don't give up. Keep on going. All right? Yes. Well, Robert, you have a great evening. And you I'll too. talk to you soon. And uh, thanks again. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Frisco. Robert, love Bye. y'all.